Well, this might be the only ranking where I've started out and at this moment, I still don't know what the exact ranking will be. So this might be the first ranking I've ever done where going into the video, I don't know what the result's gonna be. I don't know how I'm going to rank these movies. So anyway, let's rank all five Scream movies, including the new movie. Let's go. What's up guys, the new Scream movie's out. I can finally rank all five movies. Going into this, yes, I'm going to have to spoil the new movie. I have to give some reasons why I think this movie needs to be where it is, and part of that is the reveal. I could probably get away with not spoiling it, but this video is gonna last forever, so you know what? If you haven't seen the movie, you might not wanna watch this, okay? But also, going into this, I just watched Scream 1, 2, 3, and 4 over the last couple days. I did two movies a day because I wanted to get a fresh perspective. And one thing that I realized about this franchise is that all these movies are highly, highly enjoyable. It is probably one of the most consistent franchises of all the franchises. You know, there really are no hills and valleys whatsoever. So going into this, know that my number five is going to be a movie that has something that's great in it. And also, I have no idea what the ranking's gonna be. There's a couple of these movies that are freaking dead even. One of them has like a better final act and the other one has, you know, a better opening. You know, just to give you an example, it's so hard for me right now to put these in a correct order. So just going into this, know that this is right now how I'm feeling and it could change down the line, all right? So anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Number five, Scream 3. I'm gonna go with Scream 3. For a brief moment there, Scream 3 was actually above Scream 2. And when I just recently watched it uh, yesterday, I did have a blast with this movie. So I'll start off with what's so great about it is that final act with Roman is really awesome. It was so good that my recent Ranking the Killers video, I might have uh, been a little bit hard on Roman. Like, Roman might need to go up a notch because he is really that effective. I don't think he's effective up until the reveal, though. That's the big problem. Up until the reveal, Roman is a very forgettable character. He's just the director on set. And I think that is one of the mistakes that they make in these movies with some of the characters that end up being the killers is they try to push them too far into the background to where you don't even really care about them. So you have to kind of play catch up when they do eventually become the killer and they have to give you this whole backstory and this exposition to get you sped up. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I think the thing with Roman is luckily it was some really great stuff involving Maureen Prescott being his mother and really it was the performances. At the end of the day, the performance between him and Sydney at the end probably one of the most intense final acts of the franchise, if I'm being honest. But overall, the movie does have some major problems in tone. Sometimes it's a little bit too silly, um, especially with the stuff with Gail, and Gail's haircut is not helping anything, by the way. Um, one thing I did notice this time, though, is I did really like Parker Posey in this, and I've never really given her uh, a fair shake. I mean, everybody loves her from Days and Confused. I ended up having a really good time because, you know, she's playing Gail Weathers in the Stab movie, and she, of course, overacts everything. And this movie does make fun of those, like, actress and actor stereotypes and how they're prima donnas. It, it does all that stuff. It's really fun. But as far as, like, production, I think this is my least favorite. If I were ranking these in according to fun, it might go up a couple notches, okay? So I'm just ranking the overall movie. Okay, number four. Man, this is really, really tough. Um, number four, I'm gonna go with Scream 5, okay? Or Scream, like they're calling it. And uh, this one was the tough one. I didn't know if I needed to put it here or up one notch, but I'm gonna go with here for now. Uh, just because this does have some, some major problems. And as far as like n the number of problems, I think this movie might even have more problems than part three but I think the good makes up for it. Uh, but the biggest crime that this movie has is the, the reveal at the end of the killers. Because I, I thought the reasoning behind the killers was really shallow just because they're like fanatics to go that far. 
Uh, and also, if you if you stand the killers side by side, spoiler alert, it's Richie and Amber. They look like, like Richie looks like he's at least a foot and a half taller than Amber. So if you really stood those two ghost faces side by side, it would look ridiculous, right? And Richie was pretty much the obvious slasher in this, okay? Because he is the guy that you thought would be the killer. Uh, Dewey even warns, hey, don't trust your boyfriend. And then of course he ends up being the killer. And you can compare that to Billy, but Billy was a much more interesting character with a direct tie to uh, Sydney's mother. Whereas Richie, at the end of the day, it, as charismatic as Jack Quaid is, and he was funny in this movie, I think he would have been better suited for just kind of the comic relief. Hell, he probably would have been a, a great Randy type character, if I'm being honest. And I didn't really care for Randy's like nephew and niece. I think that, what they, ne nephew and niece? I think so, yeah. But the big thing that I did love about this, I gotta put this out there, is the character of Sam, and especially her sister, Tara. They were a great combo, and just the fact that Sam's father was Billy Loomis made it interesting. And I love how she freaking unleashes hell at the end on her boyfriend, killing him in like a Billy fashion, like a serial killer fashion. And so, if anything, the, the possibilities going forward uh, are great. I like those characters so much that I honestly don't even need any of the legacy characters. You know, Sam and Tara are, are fantastic. And it would be interesting to see if Scream, you know, if it could stand on its own two legs with new characters and not depend on legacy characters. I mean, don't get me wrong though, Sydney at least is gonna be coming back for the next couple movies. Okay, so what is, we got three movies left. I'm, like I've said, I'm still having a really, really hard time here because I have always put this movie at number two. And, I, and I'm having a tough time figuring if I need to keep it at number two because I love it to death. But you know what? I'm gonna put Scream 4 for the first time ever at number three. And I, I'm shocked by my own ranking. And, and you're gonna be shocked if you looked at my last ranking, okay? By what my number five was, or number four, I guess, at the time. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with Scream 4 for number three. Scream 4 is an awesome freaking movie. You I mean, take away that freaking horrible Glamour Shots cinematography, okay? Yeah. Let's get that let's get the elephant out of the room real quick. That that I don't know what the hell they were smoking with that cinematography. I, this movie I believe is shot digitally, but I've seen a lot of great looking digital movies, okay? So you can't really use that for an excuse. You know, there's especially the daylight scenes if you look like in the background like there's a scene where they come into like the bookstore in the background outside it just looks like um, white lights behind everybody. Everybody's faces look like they, they put the, uh, I guess the lighting umbrella like I'm looking right there. It, look, it looks like it's like literally a foot from everybody's face. But luckily the story is awesome. I like that it focuses on remakes. Uh, I really like the character of Charlie, but especially uh, even side characters like Kirby. Kirby is one of the most popular characters outside of the leg legacy characters of the entire franchise. I think I see her mentioned more than any other character and people want her to be back so bad. Even in the last movie, they gave you a nice little Easter egg that she's alive. So I think she'll be back in six. I watched this movie last night and I'm reminded of how great of a character Kirby really is. I hope she keeps the haircut. Saving the best for last with Scream 4 is Jill. Um, last night, it cemented the fact of why I love Jill so much. You can look past the family reasoning, you know, she's jealous of her cousin Sydney. That's a little bit soap opera-ish, but man, it, to me it's the performance. You know, Emma Roberts' performance just completely going for broke, setting up this whole plan when she's pretty much kicking her own ass uh, at the scene, and then the, the scene after in the hospital, what are you, fucking Michael Myers? All that stuff is just great, you know? She was a force to be reckoned with uh, in Scream 4. It, it's easily, I think, the bloodiest Scream movie out of the bunch. Um, the opening is weak, even though it's still fun, it, it's not as intense. And, and one thing I didn't mention about Scream 5 is that opening is the best since the first movie. So I guess I'll plug that right in here. But yeah, Scream 4, it's always been my number two. Now it's officially my number three. Okay, so now let's go to number two. Number two, Scream 2. I am shocked that I put this movie here. I have watched Scream 2, guys at least a dozen times. And for some reason, every single time I've watched it, I zone out. There, there's something about the movie that always drove me crazy, and I think I just figured out what it was. 
the opening. The opening in the movie theater, to follow up that amazing opening with Casey in the first movie, I think you're, you're already setting yourself up for failure. It was fun, but it wasn't as intense. But after that opening, man, th this movie is big. That's the one thing I noticed about Scream 2 on this last watch. It's big. It feels, you know, I guess it does what a sequel should do. You know, and the, the ironic thing is in the movie, they're talking about sequels that are better than the first movie. No, this isn't better than the first, but um, the college setting definitely ups the ante in terms of scale. There are more characters in this movie. You know, there, it's a balancing act. There's a lot of moving parts in this, but all the kill scenes are really amazing though. And some of them, I didn't even like recognize on previous watches. But CeCe's death, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar is a great one. Like he literally throws her off the balcony. But they also like to play with tension in this movie. Like the, the scene where Sydney and her roommate are running from Ghostface. You got the like security guard, the pipe goes through his face. That's one thing I never even noticed. The big thing is the, the reveal at the end, I think is the second best reveal out of the entire franchise. It, with Mickey and um, Billy Loomis's mother, Mrs. Loomis. Because Mickey was a complete psychopath. This is a guy that wanted to get caught. He's the only character in the franchise that literally wanted to get caught, go through this whole court thing and, and and plead insanity, blaming it on the movies. Just great stuff, but really Timothy Oliphant's performance. I, like I preferred Timothy Oliphant over, uh, you know, Mrs. Loomis. He took that role and he really just went for broke with it. So uh, number one, which will never, I mean, number one is of course the first Scream movie. And I, I'm glad I, I rewatched it recently because again, I was just reminded like this is a masterpiece. This is a cornerstone of horror. The first Scream is such an important movie. I've talked probably ad nauseum about the first Scream, so I probably don't even have to remind you why it's so great. That amazing final act with Billy and Stu. But really just throughout the whole movie, you know, you can go back to the, like the, the first scene with the entire cast sitting on, you know, in front of the fountain and that great dialogue. These were really fun characters. And I think that's something that they like really nailed in the 90s for some reason, you know. The 90s had some really infectious actors coming out of it. And I think that's a good reason why a lot of them are still working today. But as far as like scripts go, the first is definitely the best too because they point the finger at Billy a good five, six times throughout the movie. And for some reason, when it's revealed that it is Billy, you're, you're kind of surprised. It's crazy because you think, okay, they pointed at this guy so many times they even arrested him. There's no way he can be the killer. And usually that doesn't happen. But Billy is a, a, a great example of the obvious slasher. He is the killer. But Scream also is one of those movies that really made fun of like those genre tropes, but it was able to ride that line and still stay scary and stay serious. I mean, the opening is pretty damn scary, actually. That's a hard thing to do to be a parody, because let's face it, that's what it is. Scream is a parody of other horror movies. They make fun of these, these things, but for some reason, it's still grounded in reality, and that's why it works so well. So anyway, guys, that's my new ranking for the Scream franchise. Uh, let me know your ranking down in the comments. I know it's not an easy task to rank these movies, and I, I could rank them again next week and come up with something different. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do Free for all Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dum out.